Our final discussion on biomechanics are those of the upper body, those of the shoulder and the arm. So let's discuss that anatomy a little bit. Our upper body is made up of our scapula, our shoulder blade. It's a wingy looking bone that sits on the back of our rib cage. It's held there by muscles. Now feeding into that scapula is our upper arm, our humerus. The humeral head feeds into that scapula and creates a ball and socket joint. The idea behind optimal function of our shoulder is that our scapula acts as a stable base from which our arm can move. More practically, what that mean, it means is the gross majority of movement in our upper body should come from our arm, not from our shoulder blade. We wanna maintain the shoulder blade in a relatively neutral position as we move out of the arm. The reason this is important is when we lose stability in the shoulder blade and we start to adopt bad positions in that shoulder blade, unstable positions, that's where we start to see impingement, muscular dyskinesis, we'll see tight backs, tight upper necks, things like that. Um, rotator cuff tears, biceps tendonitis, basically just that position is the genesis of a lot of musculoskeletal pain and discomfort. So let's talk a little bit about what it means to create a neutral scapular position and how to maintain that as we move out of our arm. To learn how to create a neutral scapular position, we're going to start by standing up and making two thumbs up. Next, we're going to drop those thumbs by our side. And it's really simple. All we're going to do is slowly rotate our thumbs as far backwards as they can go. As you do that, you'll notice that your shoulder blade pinches backwards slightly. That's a good thing. That means you're doing it right. From here, all we're going to do is maintain our shoulder position and let our arms hang. This is a neutral scapular position. You'll notice that the shoulder blade isn't too far forward. It's not hyper retracted backwards. It's sitting neutral right in the middle. The idea behind scapular stability is we want to maintain this position as best as we can and then we move out of our arm and not out of that shoulder blade. We want to keep that middle 50%. Where we see people start to lose and compensate in the shoulder blade is number one, we'll see that people are stuck in a forward shoulder position. To this, we want to focus on keeping that slight retraction backwards. Once again, we're not killing ourselves to create a big chest, but we do want to have that slight pinch back in that shoulder blade. Number two, we'll see that people, when they go to pinch backwards, shrug upwards. They'll use their upper back and neck to stabilize the scapula. We wanna maintain an equal contraction uh, between all the scapular stabilizers. So as we pinch backwards, we wanna make sure that we are not shrugging up. We're keeping our shoulders pinched slightly down and away from our ears. Number three, most common fault is not maintaining these cues. So instead of maintaining that neutral scapular position, we'll start to see excessive movement out of the shoulder blades and kind of getting sloppy in how much movement we allow. Let's focus on that last statement a little bit. When I say that our scap is a neutral, uh, stable structure for our arm, that doesn't mean that it doesn't move at all. It's not just frozen here back. When we move out of our arm, we might get a little bit of movement out of that shoulder blade. As long as we are focused on maintaining a little pinch backwards and really controlling that movement, there's no problem with that, but we just don't want to get sloppy and start hucking our shoulder blades into anything. Maintaining this neutral scat position and moving from our arm grossly instead of the shoulder blade is the key to maintaining shoulder health as we do upper body exercises. Now let's talk a little bit about the musculature that goes into creating that neutral position. Now we understand that the optimal joint position for our upper body is maintaining a neutral scapular position. And even more generally, just that our shoulder blade acts as a stable foundation from which our arm can move. Next, let's discuss the musculature that goes into maintaining that neutral scapular position and what we should be feeling when we exercise. The, mu the main scapular stabilizers in our body are trapezius and our rhomboids, kind of the big thick muscles that lie in between our shoulder blades that keep them anchored back on the rib cage. Let's go through a practical demonstration of, so we understand what it feels like to engage that musculature. To learn how to feel our rhomboids and trapezius stabilize the scapula, we're gonna grab a light monster band and do a band pull apart. For this exercise, we're gonna really focus on maintaining two cues. The first cues being the ones we've already covered. As we move out of the arm, we wanna make sure that shoulder is pinched slightly back and down away from our ear. The second cue we're gonna work with is maintaining grip on whatever load we are lifting. What I mean by that, most people have a tendency to break their grip when they go to lift something. Grip is a simple way to increase activation of our mid back. When we have a broken grip, we tend to see sloppier shoulder positions. When we have a good, strong grip, 
we'll see better activation and better neutral positions out of that scapula. So in any movement that we do, we wanna make sure that our knuckles are in line with our form. We don't wanna be hyper flex, we don't wanna be hyper extended, we want a neutral grip right in the middle. Now, for this band pull apart, we're going to start by setting that scapular position. We'll have our thumbs face back as far as we can, and then we're gonna anchor that scap in that neutral position. Two, we're gonna grab the band at shoulder width apart. Three, we'll lock our arms out in front of us. As we do that, you'll notice my shoulders don't follow them. We're maintaining that pinch in the mid back because we're maintaining that neutral position. And finally, we're gonna get our grip going. So we're gonna get our knuckles in line with our forearms and maintaining all of that tension from the wrists back to the shoulder blades. We are going to pull the band apart as far as we can. As I do that, I'm maintaining that neutral scap position. I'm not shrugging upward. I'm keeping a slight pinch downward and a pinch backward. And then finally, we're gonna come nice and slow forward with our arms. As we do this, I'm keeping my shoulder blades pinched back. I'm not letting my shoulders follow my arms. I'm maintaining that neutral position. Again, we'll have our neutral wrist. Shoulders stay back. We'll keep a pinch in between our shoulder blades and slowly we'll keep that counter tension backwards to do the shoulder blade as we maintain grip with our arms coming forward. Slowly, I want you to do 10 repetitions of this. As we do these repetitions, we should get more and more sensation in the middle of our shoulder blades and those traps and rhomboids. If we're feeling our deltoid in our bicep, means we could probably be focusing on the cues we just went over a little bit more. Now, whenever we exercise, we wanna make sure that we feel that contraction of the mid back. We're focused on our grip and our scapular position, having sensation in between our shoulder blades. Next, and the final piece of this shoulder stability puzzle, we're gonna talk about rotary stability and how we use our rotator cuff to optimize shoulder function. Your rotator cuff is a set of four muscles that sit on the back of the shoulder blade. Those muscles are responsible for maintaining the position of our humeral head within the scapula. It is, they are responsible for keeping the ball nice and neutral within that socket joint. As such, when we exercise, we want to make sure we are using our rotator cuff as we move through our upper body. That's all you need to know about it. It doesn't need to get more complicated than that. So to integrate our rotator cuff into upper body mechanics, we're going to add one more layer of cues. Once again, we started with pinching our shoulders down and back to maintain a neutral scap position. Second, we want to maintain grip and a neutral wrist position against any loads we're lifting. And now third, we want to keep our elbows slightly tucked as we move out of our upper body. That is to say, we don't want to be flared in our elbow. We don't want to be hyper tucked in our elbow. We want to be in that neutral 50%. 50, uh, 50 what that looks like if we're moving in front of our body is about a 45 degree angle at the armpit. Now, rotary stability becomes even more important as we start to go overhead. Our rotator cuff plays a more active role in that humeral head position. So, as we start to move out of our arms and get more and more overhead, our rule of thumb is going to be we want to tuck our elbow just enough that we are stacked under our wrists. Same idea. We don't want to be hyper tucked, hyper flared. We want to see neutral stacking of our elbow under our wrists. So, whether it's a pull up, whether it's a dumbbell press, Whatever it is, we want to make sure that we're tucking our elbow just enough to maintain it neutral under our wrist. That is how we create stability out of our rotator cuff as we move in our upper body. So next and finally, let's apply all of these cues to a simple exercise, a TRX row, and see how all of this integrates into a simple pull movement. Integrating scapular stability into movement is as easy as just maintaining these mechanics as we do upper body exercises. So in this TRX row, and any row you're gonna see in the movement pattern section, they're all fairly similar. We're gonna start by setting a neutral scapular position. We'll get that slight pinch of the shoulder blades down and back. From there, we're gonna make sure that we have a grip on the handles, that our knuckles are in line with our forearm and that we have a nice grip. Finally, as we maintain those tensions, we're gonna pull our chest upwards and keep our elbows at about a 45 degree angle if I was to look at your armpit. That's how we integrate our rotator cuff. At the top of the movement, we're gonna make sure that we maintain our scapular position as we let our body come back down towards the ground. We don't want our shoulder to follow our arm. We wanna maintain that slight pinch backward as our arm moves forward. The end range of the movement is when the elbow is locked out, not when the shoulder comes forward. Once again, we wanna maintain that neutral position. From here, we'll focus on all those cues and do it again. Solid neutral shoulder position, pinch back and down. Solid grip on the handles and then maintaining that 45 degree at, uh, degree at the armpit. That is how we integrate 
shoulder stability into upper body mechanics. When we exercise, I know it's a lot to focus on, but we want to make sure that we are using those three cues as often as possible. There you have it, our final biomechanics lesson. With that, we've covered the entire body. We've covered the foundation, our spine, the rear tires of that car, our lower body, and now we understand how to use the front tires of that car, our upper body, our arms. From here, we're gonna talk a little bit about the practical application of these biomechanics, and then we'll parlay that into a more specific discussion of movement patterns and what these biomechanics look like and all the exercises that we're gonna be utilizing.